It was brought to my attention that last month was Mental Health Awareness Month. Sorry I missed the deadline. But after hearing about another suicide so early in this month, I thought, it's never too late. It's never too late to talk about this topic. My last scripted video was about insecurity, so forgive me if I'm not giving as much eye contact as you're used to in my other videos. I just wanted to make sure that this video was informative, as it's something that everyone around the world, including myself, deal with on a daily basis. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Life is well, bam, you're alive. Liberty is freedom. But what is the pursuit of happiness? I've always loved this four word combo because it means so much. You're alive, you are free, but now you must find a way to be happy. The reason why I say mental health is an ongoing battle is because happiness is not so easy to obtain. And once you obtain it, you have to find a way to maintain it. People always ask, why did such and such commit suicide? He was rich, he was so young, they had everything, the list goes on. The AFSP, known as the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, state on their website, that suicide most often occurs when stressors and health issues converge to create an experience of hopelessness and despair. No one is safe from health issues and no one is safe from stressors. And most importantly, no one is safe from hopelessness. This is not the sad in you, but I want to be clear. This is not some magical thing that happens to certain people. This happens to everyone including me, including you the viewer that is listening to this video, and most importantly, the person that might not see this video. Just like everyone else, I've been through a lot. I'll be open with you. I've had suicidal thoughts before, especially after my mom passed away. I never really told anyone this, and the only reason why I'm doing it on this video is because in my insecurities video, I mentioned that the videos on my channel will be about me and my honesty. I'm happy to say that I won the battle with my thoughts back then. I still struggle to this day maintaining my happiness and trying to mature it to be something greater and better. Let me be clear. I do not have suicidal thoughts at the current time, but I want it to be known I was never asked if I ever did. I also never reached out to any other people to help me to try to remedy the situation. This is the hopelessness that the website is talking about. What is the point of looking for help if no one will understand me? I know what you went through, but you haven't been what I've been through. These are the things that I would tell myself until I open my eyes and realize everyone is having a rough time. It's not just me, but how can my friend be having so much fun? Why are these people acting like there's not a care in the world? It's because they're working on it. They're trying their best to get through it. Happiness is something you must actively work on on a regular basis. If you find yourself lost and not knowing where to start, start there. Start with what makes you truly happy. That's what helped me in my dark times. That's what helped me now. It's never too late to start over. It's never too late to stop something that's causing you trouble, emotionally, physically, or spiritually. Literally, check yourself before you wreck yourself. I want to relate happiness to a phone battery. Most people charge their phones at night, wake up and it's at 100% the next day. At the end of the day, your phone battery will be like 30%, maybe even lower than that. Throughout the day, we have things stressing us out. Things from the current day, thoughts of the past, worries and concerns of the future. For example, your day might be going perfect. You get into your car and you hear a song on the radio that was you and your ex's favorite. Finally got that promotion, 
You got a house, you got a brand new car. And you're thinking, damn, I wish my mom was here to see this. Make sure to recharge yourself. We let negative things linger in our minds way too long. I don't remember where I heard it to properly quote it, but there's a saying that says you choose how long you're sad for. When I was younger, I would get rejected from my crush and I would let that bother me for days, weeks, months. After finally getting over it and maturing as an individual, I realized, wow, I could have gotten out of that funk so much sooner. I didn't allow myself to. I chose to embrace what was making me sad instead of embracing the great things that were going on around me. Same thing with my mom. I just chose to embrace that I lost her instead of embracing the people that were still around that were dealing with the same thing I was. I know what some people are thinking. Just hang with your friends, be around family, surround yourself with people that will make you happy. Sadly, that's not enough. As I just mentioned, even having an adult night with the boys won't measure up to the countless nights of feeling sad. You must find your happiness in yourself as an individual. You can't use your friend's charger forever. You need to get your own charger so you can charge your phone when you need it to be charged. You need to find your own happiness and make sure you can smile when you need to be able to smile and move on with your life. That's pretty much um, all I wanted to really say about the subject. Um, it's very touchy. I don't want to be too sad or anything like that, but I do feel though that there is a lot of reality to depression and suicide that people like to brush to the side and think it's so easy to get over things. And I think that if we think of it on an individual basis and try to let that person feel like they are part of something greater and losing them as an individual will be terrible. I think that that's something that we need to really express to those. If you notice that someone is being sad or if you feel if they are, confront them. Sometimes my friends, even if, you know, maybe if I've been a little distant for a little bit, they contact me or they talk to me like, yo, bro, you okay? I'm like, oh, yeah, bro, I'm fine. There ain't nothing wrong with me, bro. I'm good. Um, but sometimes people lie. Sometimes I've lied. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but it's, it's, it's the small gestures because I know that for some people, they think that they can prevent it. Um, or you can, you can do your best, but know that these people are, are in a, a world, they're in something very dark and it's very hard to get out of it. But if you, the more you do to help, the better. That's why I also wanted to leave some, I wanted to leave some official information um, from the suicide hotline. And if you are a loved one or showing signs of depression or suicide, contact the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK, which is 1-800-273-8255. Or contact the crisis text line by texting TALK to 741741 or visit their website at www.afsp.org. And lastly, before I get out of here, when I was in high school, after my mother had passed, um, I needed guidance counseling for obvious reasons. Um, they gave me one really good piece of advice is to write a journal, a journal or a diary, and allow you to write out your frustrations, put it on paper, you can read it, if you're comfortable, you can share it with other people um, to let them know. Because I think that that's the things that since we feel like no one will understand what we're going through, it's really good, like really good. There's apps on your phone to type notes and stuff. Take advantage of these options to get out the stress that's in you in any way, shape or form. Go out to a park. And when I was in college, I would we would walk out to the soccer field and we would just talk for hours, looking on the stars, looking into the emptiness of the sky and then outside and just talk, just to get stuff out, whatever we were going through. You might need to do some of that. If you need, if someone that you know that might be going through, suggest them to do that. This this whole video is just, I don't care, like I don't want it to be this huge thing, but if it can help one person, that's great. That's all. So like I said, um, 
call the hotline, the website. There's a text line. I didn't even know that until I started doing this research. Um, but if you want specific advice for me, write down your stuff and not that it would be funny, but later in the, you know, as you get older, you can go back and you can look at it like, Oh my God, look what I've gone through. You know, life is, life is like a book. It's like you have really rough chapters, but you know, there's going to be some good chapters. So when I look at those, my diaries and my journals that I wrote years ago, I see this person that was just going through so much with nothing. They didn't know what the hell was going on. Mom, I miss you. Why aren't you here? What am I going to do? And I look at it now, 28 years old, and I'm like, this is what I had to do. I just had to get here. And then same thing for the next year, same thing for everything. Just got to make it, got to get through it. And I hope that you can do the same thing too. Peace.